Articulations, welcome back. I am Steve Mick Jones, and we are here, quarantined, day number 69. Let's get into it. Let's see how we're feeling. Let's see how we're doing. Because you know what? I am going batshit insane. I don't know about all you. I I, I have no creative energy at all. Uh, I was actually planning on doing this episode about this class that I'm taking called Art and Morality. Because it's a really co- cool class, and I'm learning a lot of cool shit, but I just don't even have the energy to, you know, express the ideas that I have behind it, so, and, and, and why I really like it. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm just going to wing this one, because, you know, something that I have learned a little bit in the class is that um, there's this guy, Kant, who apparently is a smart guy. He writes books sometimes, or used to, probably dead, I don't know, didn't look you know, didn't look into it at all, but, uh, apparently he's, uh, highly valued, it sounds like a name that I kind of recognize, the last name Kant, with a K, anyways, uh, he has this theory about valuing, um, artists, and the value of artists comes from the fact that they channel something greater than our reality, which is a pretty cool concept, you know what I mean, art is something that moves people in a way emotionally, you know, at least good art that should, it makes you feel something that is beyond our normal five senses, you know, and so what I kind of got from that is right now, I don't, I, I find it hard, especially, like I said, to, in this stunted, this time of, like, stunted growth, you know, none of us can go out, none of us can learn anything, I, I mean, we're stuck at home trying to keep our lives going, like, we can't even keep the economy going, let alone our brains, if we're just sitting at home, even though I have classes, luckily, I have this one really cool class, that it was all online anyway, the art and morality one, that kind of gets me going, um, but every other class that has been put online is, like, just a bullshit thing that I really don't care about, and that I don't want to do, and it's really annoying to me, and I don't know, so, um, but can't, uh, again, values, um, you know, what comes from artists and, and, and through that, and, and I think, as for right now, while I'm in this stunted place, the only way to channel something higher than me is to improvise, and, you know, what I revert to when I improvise is just kind of being my self and kind of talking about myself a little bit and where I am and so that's what we're doing this podcast so here we are and you know what I think I pretty much just covered it (laughs) most of it I feel like complete ass I can't you know it's not and that's the thing is like I don't I don't even know what I'm supposed to be experiencing right like this this whole time I've been in Athens and I've been losing my mind up there too like it just feels like I need to get out of this college town where nothing happens and people just drink and we all just talk about fun drinking stories which it's not like I'm knocking that I don't I try not to judge the college uh, way of life because apparently a lot of people enjoy it and have fun with it and I mean I like drinking uh, I like fun stories about drugs especially the ones that involve me you know doing funny shit <laughs> and other people doing funny shit and uh, I have embraced that for a little bit I even wrote a story about, um, you know, I wrote a pilot script about some stoner kids getting into some stoner mischief, you know, I, I enjoy those stories, but the thing is, I am at this point in my life where I feel like I am ready to start life, like I'm ready to get out there and do things and grow, and you can't grow without experiencing shit, and at least in Athens, like, I was able to kind of have my own house and, you know, make, even though they were college friends, make my own friends, kind of uh, expand my network a little bit through my uh, professors and and, uh, talking ideologically with and philosophically with some of the good friends that I've made up there. And now I am freaking cooped up back in Lebanon, Ohio. I was with my parents for like three weeks and it was nice for a little bit because I got to hang out with um my good friends and uh now I mean all now all their parents are quarantining 
uh, their kids, which is understandable, like, I get it, I don't want to, I actually, so now, you know, I, I get it, like, I, I moved out of my parents' house to move in with my brother, which I feel so bad for him, because he's had to put up with my shit for so long now, like, <laughs> I mean, just think, like, do you want to move in with your little brother, <laughs> like, I don't have any little siblings, but I can already tell they're probably the worst, like, I, I don't know, luckily him and I have a good, um, rapport, and, we enjoy the same things, and we can talk about life a little bit, and he's really been, like, a really good mentor for me, and he, so he moved out in Athens, I think I mentioned that a couple times, and people that listen probably kind of already know that anyway, but he lived in Athens for um, the majority of my sophomore year, which was awesome, because he helped me kind of deal with the fact that I hated college and stuff, and kind of figure out why, and what I was actually interested in and what I wanted to do afterwards. And it's great. And I, I love him for that. And again, we, we hang out, we, we hung out all the time. It's like, he wanted, you know, I kind of, he always says I, I saved him in Athens as well because he was so bored up there and didn't like it either. So, you know, it's great that I get to move in with him, but now I'm living in Cincinnati in a one bedroom apartment with my older brother who has his own life and, shit going on in his life, like, he, like, he, he works at hotels, and all the, the hotels are getting shut down, and, uh, you know, and now his old, younger brother has to, like, it's like, he doesn't even know if he's gonna be able to keep his job, let alone keep his, you know, time for masturbating, or, you know, or just, he, like, he's gonna come home to this responsibility, where I don't even want to be a responsibility, you know, I don't, I, 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 not for him, not for my parents, not, you know, I want to be my own responsibility, so, I feel bad about that, but, I mean, luckily, <laughs> not luckily, but, like I said, we get along really well, so he's going through this hard time, and he is potentially getting furloughed, which is laid off for now until everything kind of opens back up again. And worst case scenario, he might, you know, if the hotel opens back up again and has a major losses of profit, he might be laid off forever. And like, I cannot even not for, I mean, I guess for it, you know, permanently. Uh, and I cannot even grasp like when he, when he kind of told me that I was like, Oh, you know, the, dude, like, everything's gonna open back up, like, you've been with that company for a while, you're gonna be fine, like, we're, we're all in this together type of thing, but it's like, to him, it's so serious, because he is on this, you know, he has experienced life, he's experienced the, you know, the work that you have to put in as an adult, and how much that work pays off, and he kind of tried to put it into perspective a little bit for me from, a, you know, a 28-year-old's point of view where like his career that he's been working on is like it, 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 it's all based around the time value of money so the more you grind out the earlier you know the earlier you grind and the more you grind out the the more money it's going to be valued at in the future so if he you know it, it's a big it's a big deal for him to like any savings that he takes out is not only it's not only that money that he has to take out of his savings, but it's the the value that that savings would have um, amounted to if he'd have put it into stocks in the future. Um, it's also, you know, he's, is he going to have to use paid time off? Is he going to have to, and, and paid time off is, uh, it's like a multiplier. So, you know, in, in the future, if your money, you know, if you stay with the company for so long, you get a multiplier with how many years you've worked there and how much pay time off you've used. And it kind of goes towards uh, a check that you'll receive from them at some point and how much, you know, on the dollar that you, you know, how per hour of pay time off. You, you know, it's, it's a little more, it, go, it went over my head. I'm still, not, I'm not going to lie, but definitely kind of hit last night. And, and, and so I don't know, I, I feel bad that I have to barge into his life, but if he's going through this hard time again, like he was in Athens, at least I'm here, you know what I mean, at, at least I'm here to kind of, you know, like, have fun a little bit, and make it easier for him, especially because he's a very, very extroverted person, luckily, I, you know, at least I'm a little, in, you know, I'm, I'd say I'm like borderline person, <laughs> borderline personality disorder, but like, introverted, extroverted, I think, think a little bit more extroverted, but I still can, 
I like my time alone. I can be inside. I can, I, you know, I can be a person who's locked up for days on end and be fine because I'll, I'll have books and, and, uh, and podcasts and to record and music to listen to and, um, just, I, I enjoy the shit out of media so much so I can watch TV shows and movies for hours on end where for people like him is like, yeah, I mean, they, they like to do that as kind of a, a time, a way to pass time. Uh, but the, the thing that gives them energy and the thing that makes them happy and the things that, that makes them not want to kill themselves daily is, uh, is just social interaction, which is actually something that I found interesting to talk to him about because, you know, people that know that they're extroverted and, and already kind of like get that, they're like, that's their thing. That's the thing that makes them happy and gives them energy. It's like, damn, like for me, for people who are less extroverted and more introverted, uh, like have to figure out, okay, I mean, being at home doesn't energize you, you know what I mean? So you still have to figure out what that thing that makes you happy is. And I mean, for me, it, it's comedy, but like, I don't know, I watched a stand up this morning and like, it just, it's not hitting in the same way because I feel like I need to use that, like, I want to use what I learned from that, that comedy and, like, tell other people about it. I think I'm so, I'm such a borderline introvert extrovert that, like, I need an equal amount of time inside, you know, taking in content and extroversion using that content and putting it out into the world. And where does creativity fit into all of this because I know creativity is important like I said I like can't values creativity as something even higher than we can comprehend and it's like where does that fit into the situation where does that make me happy and how can I channel that and I guess through improv right now uh, I think I think I really need to get back into stand-up comedy I did stand up um, probably five times over the summer, and it was it was a rush, you know what I mean. I, I it kind of fell off towards the end there because I was just I I was only doing one club, and it was the same people, so they knew all the jokes or you know my go to bits and 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 stuff like that. And I I really need to figure something. But but now that I kind of realize that that I mean that may not even be the the correct solution for me, but it's like that's I just need something. I need I. I, I I need a place to display these values that I've taken in over this time and, and kind of what I've learned. I think that's another something that kind of gives me motivation and happiness. And I think, uh, just to sidetrack a little bit, I mean, this whole thing is kind of sidetracked and not structured at all because it's all improv. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just all worked up right now because, I, like I said, I really wanted to do that episode on art and morality and I'm pissed off that I couldn't do it because I was I literally started recording it and it just kind of like fell off because I was so unenthused and unenthused and just <laughs> boring. I was boring myself, but I don't know. What was I just talking about? <laughs> That's the great thing about this. I, I get to go back. I get to stop this and go back and check what I was talking about. When you're high and nobody's recording, you can't really do that. <laughs> but hold on. Let me check. Real quick. All right. I went back and listened. And that's the other shitty thing is that. I still didn't figure it out where I was kind of going with it. But I do remember the original kind of thought that I was having. And it was something else that kind of, uh, that I, I've learned recently that gives me energy from this whole thing is like, um, well, first of all, you know, I think learning, uh, I was talking a little bit about, you know, learning and uh, expressing the values that I've figured out during this time and not being able to do that sucks. But th the fact that I'm able to realize that, I really like something that I've, I really enjoy is growing and realizing something that I didn't realize before, which is very vague, but it's like when I was with Patrick all the time and he's 27 years old, he's teaching me these things that you only get through age. And I really, really just fed off of that. I was, I was so amazed by these little things that are so important that we can't comprehend yet, but they really affect your life in, in so many different ways. I mean, just like, you know, learning and growing is something that I didn't realize. It, like, I, I mean, you do it, you naturally do it, or you were forced to do it through high school and kind of college a little bit and, you know, just growing in general. But it's like 
the realization that that is what you're doing and that you can promote it yourself by like reading or getting into an interest of yours, like, like really diving into it, like uh, something from you with finances and, and, you know, that and how important that is in life as well. And so, I don't know, that's something that I, I really enjoyed and figuring out how to do that. And, but then an, uh, the other part of that, I guess that's kind of, it kind of goes along with the introversion, extroversion is like, that was the introversion, like taking in the content, listening. But something that I also really enjoy is the extroversion part of it and giving that back to other people. Like people my age, like the fact that I was able to learn from a 28 year old and, and coming back to people my age that are 20, 21, kind of going through the same thing that I am and helping them work out their own problems and realize things that they don't understand. Like uh, a, a friend of mine is considering, she, she's a little bit younger and she, it's her first year as a freshman in college and she's considering dropping out because she doesn't, it doesn't feel right for her. It doesn't, she doesn't make her happy. It doesn't motivate her. And, and she's sad every day. And that is something that I really considered all the time when I was a freshman. And so it's something I was, I was able to relate to a lot. Uh, so on, on one hand, I was able to give her my wisdom, but, but then I was, I also found myself giving her something that my dad had said too, where it's, you know, I got wisdom from him about, uh, it's like, if, if you want to get into it a little bit, if you're going through something like that, like you want to drop out, it's like, okay, think about, you know, you're allowed to drop out. That's the thing that he always said to me. He's like, yeah, you, you can drop out. I mean, it was a little more, <laughs> he wasn't so enthused about it. He's like, yeah, you know, you can, you can drop out, but you have to show me a plan. You have to show me what you're going to do if you drop out. Like, where are you going to go? Do you, I mean, where you can work? Like, you can't just drop out and live at home and do nothing. You know what I mean? And that's really something that Patrick has learned too throughout his life is he was always, he worked at, uh, in Cincinnati at the Doubletree and that was a hard job, you know, working lots of hours, late nights, people calling off a lot and it was shit. It was hard work. And so he was like, I need to get out of here. I need to do something else. And so he just kind of like went to his, uh, employers and was kind of like, I need to get out of here. And so they assigned him to Athens and okay, yeah, I'll check out Athens. I'll try it out. And then in Athens, it was kind of the same thing. He's like, well, this is a, it's a nice job, but it's a desolate area. I have uh, no room to be social out here. I don't, you know, it's a college town, and then there's the townies. And a 28-year-old does not fit in in either of those groups. A 28-year-old businessman, uh, let alone, you know, in a, in a liberal town. And, uh, you know, it's not that politics have that much to do with it, but they have a little bit to do with it, you know. But, you know, he, so he... he was like, I need to get out of here. I need to be out of Athens and kind of went back to the group and was like, just get me out of here again. And now he's back in Cincinnati. Luckily they assigned him. Well, at first he went back to Cincinnati and it was a shitty hotel that actually was doing so poorly. They shut down. So after that, he, uh, luckily he got assigned to, um, the AC, which is a really nice hotel, but it was, it was, he was always, he was always thinking I need to get out of here and not where do I want to go? You know, it's, you have to be forward thinking in ways where you are, it's in a positive thing. It's like, where could I go? Where, what do I get to do? And lay out a plan for yourself. If you're not happy, lay out something that would make you happy. And then how do you get there? You know? And, and so that me giving her that advice really, you know, it fed my soul a little bit, you know, it, it, it really was like, okay, it, it, and it's not even that, it was like a, a, t a conversation over text, so it's not even like I was really able to read the way she was responding to it, or her emotions, her reaction to it at all, in, but, I mean, I kind of was with her, you know, she said thank you a couple times, like, thank you, thank you, like, whatever, but, over text, I feel like nothing is that deep or can be that deep. I mean, I don't know. That's not true, but not as, I don't know. I just feel like conversation is more, I don't know. There's just more, more there. And, uh, but, but that's not the point. The point is I was able to give that to her. And even though I couldn't read and get that full feeling of satisfaction that I, I guess, I mean, that's kind of fucked up 
that I crave, <laughs> not that I crave, but something that gives me energy, but I was still able to be like, that was something that helped her make a big life decision, you know, dropping out of college is huge, that impacts you in, in so many ways, and, you know, that's something you seriously need to think about, and just because you make a pros and cons list, that doesn't help all the time, because there's pros and cons that are, like, equal in, in heaviness, you know, like, it was, like, disappoint my parents on the con side, but pros were, I'm happy, it's like, well, I mean, those are two very, very big things, and it's like, also, the money, the financial aspect on, on the con side, I'm losing all this money that I am set back, but, you, you know, and, and being happy, how much does being happy have to cost for you, and, uh, you know, I, I, and I, I, that's something that really, again, I've, I've learned over this small period of time of being incubated that really energizes me, and now I still have, what, we're gonna be two more weeks in this bullshit? I, I don't know, that's the thing, I... I, I really don't know w how we're going to do this. So now I have to, as opposed to, you know, my job used to be that bit of extroversion that I would, which was great for me in Athens because I would be really introverted in my house and, and kind of do my own thing and take in movies and learn and, you know, whatever, read and, and, and do podcasts. And then I would go to my job where I'd have to talk to my coworkers. And then as a server and bartender, you have to talk to people and kind of like, it was, uh, you know, it's not, that's not really about, you know, giving things that I learned as much, but it's still, you know, it, it got that extrovert, extroverted need for me out of the way, kind of. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that you should find from your job, that it should satisfy you in certain ways, but again, every job has its ups and downs, so you get the satisfaction in one way from your job, and then you should find another satisfaction in not working and, and doing other things and learning and growing. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm going insane, and I'm going to continue going insane for another, who knows, that's the only thing, is like, there's not even a deadline, like, we are fucked. Ah. Uh, but it's fine, you know, I can still, I mean, to be honest with you, now that I'm living, I'm, I don't really have to worry about my parents, I'm not putting people at danger by going over to my other, like today, I'm gonna admit something kind of dirty that I did, something kind of wrong, <laughs> but, like, I just went over to my friend Adam's house, and there was, you know, four college dudes hanging out there, and yeah, you're supposed to do social distancing, but there are four college kids that aren't at risk, you know what I mean? I'm not putting them at risk, and hopefully they're smart enough to stay away from people who are at risk at well if they're hanging out with college kids like we were. So, you know, I, I just, and the thing is, that's not even like what kind of, you know, I like chilling and hanging out with guys, and like, that's one part of extroversion that fulfills me, but it's still not the part that I want to grow on, something that I really want to do, this is, it's, <laughs> this kind of is me following my own advice, and it, it's not that I need to get out of here, it's not me wanting to, just focusing on the fact that I can't do anything, but it's me focusing on the future, and it's like, I want to start growing, I want to start learning, I want to start my own life, and that's kind of what I was talking about in the beginning, is like, I, before all this shit hit, I was going to be able to, to, to go to New York, and in New York, you know, you're just kind of forced, and I think anywhere out of Ohio is really, you're kind of forced into a situation where you have to grow, whereas now, I have to stay in Ohio and figure out how I can grow, as opposed to just having it come easy, which is kind of fucked up, I would, I mean, it's not fucked up, it's, it's me ho wishing to do this stuff without having to put effort into figuring out how to do it, and now I have to figure out how to do it, and I don't know if that really makes sense at all, or if any of this has structure or not, I think it kind of does, I'm not even, like, drunk or anything, I'm just scatterbrained, because this whole situation is just a bunch of fucking bullshit, and, and, uh, a a anyways, people die, you know what I mean, people die, I get that it's more people than usual, <laughs> And that's exactly what Vanessa Hutchins got in trouble for. But if you think about it, I mean, the death toll over a few weeks, I, I don't know. Somebody's going to take that out of context because, again, I get it. I get that it hasn't even fully hit the U.S. yet and it's going to come hard. And once I start to know people that 
die. It's going to really be impactful. And the way that it impacts the economy doesn't even affect me yet. Like I was kind of saying earlier, is like I don't have experience in a career. I don't have experience at a at real life yet, at a full-time job that is now gone. You know, I, I did a part-time job. Like it only affects us in a certain way. And that's another thing what, what that's making me mad is that all these college kids and and younger generations kind of are all pissed off about things that they don't even understand yet that I don't even understand yet but it's like how can you have such strong opinions when you haven't experienced the real world you haven't had to live on your own and some have and those people have valid opinions but there's just coming from a, a privileged and naive place that people are getting mad about certain things and I don't want to get into it because it, it does kind of dive into politics a little bit but you know and every, that's kind of another thing it does kind of relate to what I've been learning about um in the art and morality class is like does politics have to be an art and does art have to have politics and you know it, like should there be censorship in art and why and for there are good reasons for censorship as in you know, moral values, and, but does it represent moral values? I don't know. It's just, it's just all, you shouldn't place priority in politics, in art, (laughs) if that makes sense, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I still might do an episode on that if I get the urge, if I, if I read more into it, and learn more about it, and get excited about it, and am able to articulate it in a way that other people want to listen to it, but, uh, for now, I am more focused on, you know, I <laughs> forced to be focused on this introverted, introverted part of myself, and that's really what I'm thriving off of right now, and uh, that's what I'm making this episode about, and why I'm making it about that. So I think I've dived into a lot of things emotionally. I can't, you know, I'm still, you know, I've been in Athens for so long and not able to fill, fulfill an emotional connection with, um, you know, a partner or anything. And now that I'm back in Athens, there's, I don't know, there's, there's people that I've had relationships for so long that that it seems like it would just, again, it'd be, it's easier than having to figure out and make a relationship and then dive into an emotional connection. Whereas like, I already have that established rapport with people and uh, one girl in specific. And it's like, it would be easy to just dive into that emotional part of it. And I really want to, you know, I, I really do because I, I haven't fully experienced, I don't know, I experienced the first relationship, a first love, but that's kind of just setting the boundaries and, you know, you're still so young, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And now I think it's time for me, like, I kind of understand, like, the basis of, of what love is, and now I want to dive into it and kind of set standards for you know, how much I'm willing to get hurt, (laughs) and, uh, you know, and, and how much a person can mean to me, it's like, you don't know if a person's the one, because if you start out thinking that that person is the one, then you're gonna get really hurt when you find out that they're not, but if you go into it thinking this person's not the one, and then they are, it's like, you're kind of closing yourself off, so, you know, it's like, I want to figure out what I consider to be the one, and, and what, and, you know, and time is always a factor in all of that. And I, I'm not able to, to put any time, as much time as I would like, into that relationship. And, you know, there's just so many factors in life. And there's so many things to figure out and to be excited about. But it's hard to do that when... Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> there's so many things to be excited about. And it's hard to do that when you're cooped up inside and can't talk to people or do the things that make you happy, and, uh, I don't know, people are arguing about, you know, would you rather save lives, or keep the economy alive, and it's not just keeping the economy alive, it's keeping people sane, and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a tough decision, I'm glad I don't have to be the one to make that, um, anyways, those are my problems, <laughs> But you you know you want to know what? I'm still appreciating the small things, and I think that's something that you should focus on doing too. You know, I I get to 
you know, yesterday was a, a great day, you know, yesterday was, it was sunny, it was beautiful, there were people out laughing and, and talking and having little tiny relationships with people that they pass by and actually looking each other in the face and because they crave social interaction as well as I do, but they're pulling their head out of their phone for just a little bit because they have so much time now to be on their phone that they're kind of being like, okay, well, I'm kind of bored with this now. <laughs> it's like I need something else and that something else is hopefully, uh, you know, making people, that's the kind of the bright side is hopefully people learn that, you know, they get bored of their phones in the, in the internet world for a little bit and come back to the real world and have to figure themselves out and figure out that they need other people a little bit more than they need their, their digital people. So, uh, there's that. I, I mean, again, I get to hang out with my brothers, you know, luckily I'm so grateful to have a, a amazing older brother who f- funds my alcoholism occasionally and who is able to chill out with me and have a good time and have good conversation. And, uh, you know, parents that are supportive of me, doing my own thing and understand, you know, while they want me to be home and want to smother me, they understand that I have my own life now and they still are like, yeah, we'll buy groceries, you know, we'll chip in every once in a while. I mean, they won't buy, you know, obviously I'm not going to let them buy my groceries because of the fact that I want to, you know, do my own thing, but they offer that and and they're awesome. And I do have a creative side that I, I, I can channel when I really you know, have the time and I'm in the right place to do. I'm grateful for that because I, a couple of days ago, wrote like the first five minute set for stand up that I, you know, I haven't done that since summer. I wrote, I woke up in the morning and was just inspired and like, oh, I could make a thing out of that, a funny thing, and wrote down a few pages of it to, to, to and, and, and then that's great. And I'm glad. I'm glad about all that. And I'm glad that I can appreciate those little things. But I am just so ready. I'm so ready to learn and grow. And I want all of you to come on that journey with me. And I am happy to report in on you. And I hope that this interests some of you. And that I haven't lost all of you. Uh, But yeah, I don't know. I hope you want to learn and grow too. So come with me on this adventure. And uh, watch me either lose my sanity (laughs) through this thing or you know these are just emotions that I've never experienced before like this frustration is something that I've kind of experienced but never realized now I realize it and I'm experiencing it it's in a in a new way and uh yeah you'll get to see me progress throughout this and figure out how I deal with it and uh and move on so I hope things are all right for you I hope you've been able to appreciate the little things about this and see the silver lining, and if not, you know, I challenge you to, (laughs) I challenge you to think, what, what's great about this, what is good, what, what's, what gives me a little smile, or a little, little positivity every day, you know, I don't know, I'm sorry for the negativity that I exposed today, but it's something I need to get off my chest, and yeah, thank you, I love you, okay? Amen, bye. Help!